Hey everyone, this is Matt Perez, and welcome to video six in our SOLIDWORKS API project tracker series. So up until this point, we've basically handled the first two items on our list. We're able to track, get, and add custom properties, and we made a couple if statements and else if statements to deal with whether or not those custom properties exist and whether or not we want to add them. We also are able to track the file name, and we made an if statement as to whether or not the document was unsaved, and we put in a few more declared variables for strings for the file path and no file path. Now we want to look at dealing with date and time. So date and time are pretty straightforward, especially when you're talking about system time. So as we're looking at the overall scope of the project, we want the user to be able to click a button. And when they click that button, we want to record the system time. Now, of course, we don't have a user form right now, so we don't have a button to click. So at this point in time, I really can only print or do a message of the system time. So what I wanna do is add a message box. So MSG box, and I'm simply gonna say time. And then I wanna do MSG box, and I'm gonna type in date. So pretty straightforward. This is already coded in here. All you have to do is type in time and date and it'll grab the system time, the system date. There's a lot of functionality like this built into VBA. I'm also going to add them to the same line. I'm gonna do a couple spaces in here and I will add date to that line as well. That way we don't have to have two lines for this information. So now let's run through the program. We'll save it and we'll play through it. Now you'll notice there are no other message boxes anywhere else. Nothing else in the program is prompting us or, or telling us unless the custom properties are missing. So it shoots right down and gives us the current time and the current date. Very straightforward and it's gonna be really easy once we access Excel to just pop that information into a cell value. So now we have to make the decision whether or not we want to start to work with the user form side of things or if we wanna start working with opening and shutting Excel and pasting values. Now, a lot of the values that we're gonna be working with are coming from this information here. We're gonna be taking the project name, the project number, and the path name and pasting it into Excel. But we also have to be able to control things such as these values, whether or not the custom properties exist. If they don't exist, we need to prompt the user and have them enter these values. We also need the user to enter a note and they need to interact with the form by clicking in and clicking out and actually giving us the information, the time information. So at this point in time, rather than working with the Excel side of things, I'm gonna get into the user form side of things. And really, the only main reason is because once we get into Excel, it's gonna be pretty straightforward to actually paste values in there. There's gonna be a little functionality we talk about, but for the most part, all we're doing is interacting with a single cell on a single sheet of a single spreadsheet. So it's not gonna be real complicated, so it's really good that we have all the information we need before we get into Excel. To insert a user form, we simply need to go to the top and we have an insert user form option. You can see that we also have module, class module, and procedure. For us, we want to insert a user form. We're going to end up using multiples of these, probably five, maybe even six different user forms. Now the reason is because we're going to have a lot of information on user form one. We're going to display the project information, the project number, the project name. We're going to display the file path. And uh, we're also going to give the user a section for a note. Now, if the user clocks out without saving a note, we're gonna tell them that they didn't save a note and give them another option to enter a note. But as we open the form, as we open the program, if the custom properties are missing and we need to interact with the user, we need them to be able to enter a value. We need them to be able to enter the project name and project number at the same time or each individually. So user form one is the overall, the main user form two and three are gonna be individual project number and individual project name, four will be project number and project name, five will be the note. Of course, it doesn't really matter what number, what order they come in, because we're gonna be accessing them individually, but just note that we will have to create multiple user forms. So to get started, I am going to make this a little bit bigger and we can size it down as we need we really need to plan out the overall layout of the program. Now, there are a lot of controls that we have here. We have labels, which we can control in the background with code. We can populate the labels with what we want. 
but for the most part for us, these labels are gonna be fixed. We have text boxes. Now these text boxes are gonna be very handy because we're gonna place things like the project name, the project number, those, that information will be placed within a text box. We have a combo box, and this is gonna be basically a drop-down list. If you want the user to be able to select values from a list, then you'll have that option. For us, let's say that they omitted the project name or project number, we could give them the option for a drop-down box to select those values, but those values would have to be populated from somewhere. You could very easily populate them in the code, but most of the time when you add a new project name, add a new project number, you don't wanna come back into the code. You could also populate it from Excel, but then you're gonna to have to open Excel to get those values, close Excel again. Then when they clock in, you'll open Excel, paste the values, close Excel, and so on. So it adds a little bit more lag, a little bit more system lag, a little bit more time to the program to do it that way, rather than just having them manually enter those values. Check boxes, option buttons, toggle buttons, uh, a lot of different options here the four main things that we're gonna be dealing with. We're gonna use frames. It's a good way to organize your form. That way we can keep information separate from other things very easily, very visual, to kind of help the user pick areas to work in. We're gonna be using command buttons, very simple things like logging in, logging out. We're gonna have those values there. We're gonna be using labels for things like project name, project number, just those text descriptors that we need. Then we're gonna be using text boxes to actually populate them with things such as what the project name is, the value of that, the project number, the file path name, and so on. So to get started with your user form, we're gonna work on the overall look of it. Now you could start with the functionality of it then rearrange things, but I'm gonna go ahead and start with the look and work from there. So once we insert frame one, over on the left-hand side, you see that we have a name, we also have a caption. Now, this caption is going to be what's populated at the top of frame one. So right now, I'm gonna call this active document properties. We also have the available option to change things like the font, the font style, whether or not it's bold, the size of the text, and that will really change the way that it appears. We can also change things like the border style, we can have a more dramatic border as we select it. There are also some options for special effects. Right now it's flat, we could do raised or sunken, and that'll change the way things look. Now at any point in time when the user form is selected, at this point it doesn't do anything, but we can still play it, and we can take a look at the appearance of it. Very important that you see what it looks like when things are popping up. Now we can also take a little bit deeper look into this and modify things like its parameter. We can make it 100 units high, we can go down to the width, we can make it 300 wide, and then we can look at the overall user form. Now the overall user form has the same thing, user form one name, but it also has a caption. So inside the caption, we can call this our MLC project tracker and that'll be displayed whenever this window pops up in the user's interface here. So again, very important that we take a look at how everything's populating and the way things look and, and how we want them to look. So right now, we basically just have a descriptor here. We have the overall border. We can tell where this is located. For instance, we can tell it's 12 down from the top. We can tell it's 18 from the left, but we can make that 12. Then we can look at the overall size of our MLC project tracker user form. We can see that its width is 333.75. Well, we actually, let's make it 330, and that way things are pretty well centered here. So as we look at it, everything looks good. Now I know it seems like we might be taking a lot of time at this point to get things centered and, and get them appearing properly, but this can be pretty frustrating. It can take a lot of time. So keep that in mind as you're designing these forms that you probably are gonna end up spending a good bit of time in order to get these things to look the way you want. Once we have this frame, then we can start populating it with things. The first thing I'm gonna do is create some text boxes and some labels. So this label here is going to be, I'm just gonna leave the name as label one, but the caption is going to be project number. And then I can copy this label, control C, and I can paste another version of it. And that keeps them exactly the same size. 
and then I can simply change it to project name. Now, of course, with each of these, I can select both and we can change things such as the text alignment. If I want them both to be over to the right, we could also do things like change the width if they're common. So instead of 114, let's say that maybe it can be 80. And that kind of simplifies things a little bit. Next, I'm gonna add text boxes. So this is where things like our project name, actual value is gonna be displayed and project number as well. So we can modify these parameters. Uh, let's say that 75 could be enough. And that helps us kind of organize things. If we control select both things, we can move them around individually or we can move them around as a group. And that kind of helps you overall when you're dealing with these things. So top is 12, our height is 18. If we look at our text box, the height's 24. If we wanna keep them the same, control select both of them, right click, we can align tops, bottoms, middles, whatever the case might be. That way everything is nice and symmetric, nice and centered. We can move them over, get them closer. Again, move them as a group. And then we can copy that, paste it. Now it's very, very important, and I know I said very twice, but it's very, very important that you understand how the, the names and the descriptors work for these. So right now it's called text box one. That doesn't mean very much to me. What I want to do is change it to TXBX and I'm gonna call it proj number. Now for the second one, text box two, and you can use whatever nomenclature you want, but I like to give it some sort of description here. So that way when I click on it, of course here it tells me exactly what it is, but when we're writing the code and we have to access that information, it's gonna be very important that I know the names of each of those cells. All right, so at this point, I'm going to save this and we're gonna look at how we can populate these real quick with some value. To do that, we need to create some code for the user form. So if I double click on anything, for instance that, it will create a sub-program for that specific instance. Now what I wanna do is create an instance for my user form. So user form one in this case, and what I wanna do is initialize it. So I'm gonna manually type this in, and now I have user form one initialize. Now there are also different ways to do this. If we delete everything from the general tab, we can scroll down and we can select user form. Now you'll notice it says user form click, but once I have user form inserted there, we can scroll down to initialize and that'll make it for us. And you notice when I do it this way, it doesn't put the one after it. So it's very important that we look at the nomenclature and you use some of the tools available to you in order to start creating these programs. Now, whenever we call our user form and we wanna start displaying it and start running some code, it's gonna go through this initialize. So it's very important that we initialize the user form and we add all the information we want. So back in our MLC project tracker module, if we view the code in here, a lot of this information, a lot of the stuff that's going on here is actually gonna be going on inside of the user form initialize. So I'm gonna take all this information, I'm gonna cut it, right click on user form, view code, and I'm gonna paste it all in here. Now you notice that some of the formatting gets a little bit messed up here based on tabs, but everything comes in. Now you might be wondering, well, what about all those declarations we made back in the module here? Are they gonna work here? Well, maybe yes, maybe no. But what I like to do is I'm just gonna take all this information, go back to my user form, and before private sub, above it, I'm gonna paste that. Now the reason I do it before private sub user form initializes is because we're gonna have a lot of different subroutines in here, different areas where we're gonna to need to use information. We might need to use file path in two of them or three of them, and making these variables declared outside of any of these will allow access in all of them. So basically we don't limit where these are getting used. So now we have all these declarations here, Back in MLC Project Tracker, back in the main here, we want to call our user form. So very straightforward. All we need to do is type in user form one. And once we hit the period, we start to type in show. And you see show comes up. One more thing that I do is type in 
VB mode list. Now, when we, we use VB mode list, this means that you can still interact when you modify this parameter here, you can still interact with SolidWorks in the background. So it's very important if we ever add the functionality to do things like click on something in SolidWorks, if we need the user to make a selection or so on. So that information there allows us to pop the window up in SolidWorks, but still have access to it. If we look at our user form right now, we have two different text boxes that we need to populate with the project number and project name. They're both named TXBX proj name and proj number. So as we view the code, we've run through everything else in here. We know that we'll either have the custom properties added and these values added, which right now won't do us any good. But if the file has the custom properties, we have proj num and proj name. These are values that we want to populate our text box with. So we're gonna start with the code txbx proj num, and start our project number dot value. Now you notice nothing comes up here. Now that's because I actually typed in number. So if we type in the entire thing, txbx proj number and hit the period, now we actually get some in-context help here. So very important that you know the exact name of these things that you're trying to manipulate. Now we wanna control the value of it. So dot value is equal to, in our case, proj num. Then we want txbx proj name dot value is equal to proj name. So what this will do is it will take the value of this text box, which is currently empty, and it will populate it with whatever this value is. So let's go ahead and save this. We'll go back to the main. We will go back to SolidWorks and make sure that we're on a file that has these custom properties. And let's go ahead and run the code and see what happens. So we're gonna run it from main. It pops up our user form. And now we have project number 728543, project name video with a capital VI. We go back to our file you see that that's exactly what's in here. Now, if I change this, I change this value, I change this to one, two, three, four, five, six, save the file, even though the entire file isn't saved, we go back and we rerun the code. You see that it changes, it repopulates it, it reinitialized it, and it gave us the information. So this is a very good start to creating our user form and actually populating it with some valuable information, the stuff that we're trying to get out of our SOLIDWORKS file. This information is gonna go a long way for us, and now we, we know how to add it to our user form, we know how to control it. And in the next couple videos, we'll get into a little bit more detail on adding some more information and also giving the user some control, giving them some buttons and, and manipulating things like that. But if you have any questions on what you saw here, please email SOLIDWORKS support at mlc-cad.com, and we'll see you next time.